What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris, going to be casting the final week of the Nexon Invitational Super Match. This time it's going to be between Team Startail and Tong Fu, although I think Tong Fu actually does normally have a different lineup. I don't really know who X Bingo is, uh, because I've seen around Longji D. Yafets and Kabu, of course, everyone knows. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I think they were doing something a little bit different just for this tournament. Like they sent out, they didn't send out their entire team, so I think that's what's going on. Also, this game happened, or this game was played live at about like 4 a.m. my time, or something like that. Something that I couldn't be available to actually be awake and stream it live. So my apologies if anyone was expecting me to do that. I was expecting me to do that, but I didn't know that apparently Koreans don't really have this, or next time at least, don't really have this tournament on a regular schedule. Because, I mean, last week it was earlier. It was 12 o'clock for me. I could do that. I, that's that's fine for me, but... Uh, sorry, guys. I'm not going to wake up at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock or whatever time it was just to cast some Dota. And I would have neighbors and roommates that would be, get so fucking pissed at me. Like, I would literally be casting, and then they would wake up and just, like, beat me over the head with something. That would be what would happen. But, enough about that. This is going to be between Tongfu and Startail. Startail have won the Nexon uh, Sponsor League, Nexon Sponsorship Bell. League, the NSL. And uh, so they're pretty much, I would say, the cream of the crop of the Korean teams. I haven't seen that much of them just because I haven't been paying attention too much for of uh, towards the Korean teams. Tongfu has a very strong name, and well, again, I don't really know how powerful Ten Mikasa as well as X Bingo are. But uh, Long DD, Yafets, as well as Kabu, those are all pretty much just household names as far as the Asian scene goes. Radiant like, when I know who they are, then that means you should probably know who they are also. So, yeah, Tong Fu, definitely some, uh, pretty, a pretty big name. Uh, wouldn't say that they're, they're up, definitely up there in the, uh, in the power scale of Asian, or Asian Ten specifically, I guess, Chinese teams. They are... Not at the top, I would say, but Five they're definitely in that upwards area. So, yeah, Startail have their work cut out for them, but Team, team Startail have proven that they're uh, pretty damn good. So, we'll see how this matchup actually works out. Tongfu going to open up their picks with a clockwork as well as the Rubik. So, we're going to be seeing a little bit of cogging action. Telekinesis with cogs is incredibly useful. If they manage to slip out, you just jam them right back in there. Probably won't really happen all too much, but... Later on in the uh, mid-late game, that will be a very large combo for Tong Fu, and Dyer really just a controlling combo. Being able to put people in cages like that is such an incredible advantage. Actually, taking a look at the bans real quickly, after t seeing Team Startail uh, pick up the Visage as third pick, Alchemist and Spirit, well, I mean Pugna and Lich as well, I don't know. Why did I call this guy Spirit? I have no fucking... What am I... This guy has his Elder Titan. Alchemist Titan, what? He, this isn't Spirit at all. This is. I should just like restart Five this cast. It's been remaining. abysmal. But I'm going to keep going because screw it. But yeah, Elder Titan, uh, these are all like really these high priority time. bands. But uh, picking up a Clockwork as well as Rubik over the Visage, Tong Fu definitely have something planned. Even banning out the Naga Venomancer. Those are two more commonly seen supports that are you know, generally taken Radiant over Team Rubik. Pick. But Tong Fu going to give Startail very powerful supports in the Visage as well as the Crystal Maiden. And both of those heroes do partner very well with that Marana. Being able to lock someone down with the Slows or uh, Frostbite or what have you sets up for a really, really easy arrow. And Tong Fu, they don't really have that many tools to get out of that. Weaver might have a time lapse later on. But that arrow, for the most part, is guaranteed to hit, at least for the first couple minutes of the game. Startail is the fourth pickup, going to pick up the Dragonite. So that's their solo mid hero, it looks like. Got a good mix of semi carries on the Startail side, Dragon Knight as well as Marana, both heroes that could do well pretty much at any stage of the game, and then accelerate later on, uh, depending on how much farm they actually get. Curious to see Steam Team Startail ban out that Invoker. Banning out Invoker Five and Chen is uh, pretty remain. rare. Invoker is still, although he's more commonly seen nowadays, he's still in my eyes a fringe pick. Time. He does have his weaknesses, and uh, he could well work very well actually with Clockwork and Rubik. So I guess that is a combo that Tong Fu could have exploited, though, uh, really, it's uh, just an extra that they could add on. Wasn't exactly, I don't think, what they were planning on going for. It's like, we're not going to run the good old Cog Sunstrike mid-game. Uh, it would have just been something extra that they would have had if they happened to pick Invoker, but that is also not going to happen in this game. Tong Fu with the Weaver pickup, going to solidify some of their late game. 
as well as going for an Earthshaker. So that's their secondary support, Earthshaker as well as Rubik. That's a lot of stun duration for Tong Fu, and combined Clockwork in there as well. And well, both sides really are disable heavy. So BKBs are going to be very important this game. Especially for the Weaver, especially for uh, DK. Mirana is a little bit safer in that she could kind of stand on the fringes of the fight and then do her thing from out there. But eventually she will need to BKB or else she will get wrecked by all this magic that's going to be flying around. Final bands coming out. Timbersaw as well as a Shadow Fiend. Tong Fu still looking for their mid lane hero. Whereas Startail, their mid lane is pretty much solidified in that Dragonite. They have a pretty solid tri lane and hell, they even have a pretty strong uh, setup for dual lanes. CM Mirana is very, very functional. Visage as well as X Hero. That'll be a pretty solid combination as well. And Tong Fu, their lanes are strong, but uh, I think that they, uh, Startail might be able to get away with dual lanes. Reserve of course, time. Earthshaker, Weaver, Rubik. If that tri lane does actually happen, then it's gonna, any dual lane is going to really be hard pressed to deal with that. Rubik isn't exactly a, the highest damaging hero in the tri lane, and really, Earthshaker isn't either. But just the sheer amount of lockdown time that they have, plus Weaver right clicks, well, it will probably be enough. And Team Startail, with their final Dying pickup, is going to solidify that Bounty Hunter, which we've been seeing a, a little bit more as the roaming role. Usually against junglers, that happens. Or, you know, like dedicated junglers, Chen, Enchantress, those types of guys. Bounty Hunter could just stalk them and make their lives a little bit more miserable. But it looks like Startail are actually going to go just for the good old defensive tri lane, Bounty Hunter off lane, Dragonite mid. They can mix it up a little bit depending on whether or not they think Tong Fu are actually going to send their tri lane against Startail's tri lane. Ooh, Tong Fu. Going to go with the Juggernaut as their, well, is their mid pick? Juggernaut versus Dragonite? It's not, it's not terrible, actually. Of course, uh,. I don't really know, again, who this guy is. I should probably look at Liquipedia and find out what they did, because I'm pretty sure these guys aren't in Tongfu. Although this guy might be. I have no fucking clue. Does it matter? It probably does. I probably should have looked this up beforehand. But, uh, hell, we could do some research on the spot. Let's do a quick, uh, Steam Pro. Well, fine. I didn't know you could actually do that. This is new to me. Well, shit, they don't exist. Okay, guys, we're playing with ghosts. We'll see how these lanes shape up. I expect it's going to be a mid lane juggernaut. I don't know. Anyway, on the Tongfu side, we have Mikasa playing the Weaver. Yafets is on. I'm saying it's juggernaut because it's Yafets. B X Bingo is on the Clockwork. Yafets on the juggernaut. Long DD is going to play on the Earthshaker. Kabu on the Rubik. On the other end, wow, Startail. MP on the Dragonite. We have Crystal Maiden being played by 10BZ. YR is on the. Bounty Hunter Visage on being played by Gandhi and Gyu is on the Mirana. Very, very aggressive. Level 1 smoke coming out from Startail. They have a Mirana Arrow. They have a brutal level 1 combination. And Mikasa might be the first one to figure that out. No, it's actually the office. But here comes the Blade Fury. Hitting onto two heroes. Three heroes. Very, very solid Blade Fury. But also taking a lot of damage in return. There's a Telekinesis. It's going to stun everybody. MP going to get in there with a the Dragon Tail onto the tankiest hero. This could be a little bit risky. Shikuchi onto everyone as well as a 5 man Fissure. YR on his way out. He should be able to make it out just fine. They need to drop another sentry. If that's going to happen, another Nova slowing everyone down. But Gandhi starting to drop very, very low. Has a salve. Will get cancelled by Mikasa with another Shikuchi. Will secure the first blood onto Gandhi. Everyone from Startail is in full retreat. Another Dragon Tail slowing down Mikasa. A Fissure once again onto three heroes. Another Blade Fury coming through. Gyu can get lifted up into the air. Get thrown down into Yafet. Spin and it will be enough to kill him. Him off YR will just barely dodge death with that invisibility, but it's three kills for Tong Fu and Startail with you know supposedly a better level one. Really didn't manage to get a great fight there because I think or solely due to the fact that they clumped up. Mikasa ran through with a five man Chikuchi, and it's not the biggest spell, but hell, when you hit five people with it, that's 450 damage onto the enemy team. Forget this. Long DD as well, hitting literally everyone on the entire team with one fissure, giving so much time for Tong Fu to just right click away and really just get that early chip lead. Once Startail were forced to retreat, it, that fight was all over. Tong Fu already with a crippling, or er, I guess, Startail with a crippling disadvantage. Tong Fu delivering a crippling blow. Someone's getting crippled in this game, and I think we all know who, it's, who it is with a 3 0 kill lead. Already uh, 47 minutes and 47 seconds into the game, Weaver picking up two of those kills, plus having an assist as well. Mikasa, as the solo mid Weaver, is going to be absolutely rolling in the dough. You can see already picking up a bottle after going for a full-on stats regen build might actually bring down MP. MP doesn't even have enough mana for a Dragon Tail. So Mikasa will do his best, and he is doing his best to force this Dragonite to play super defensively. 
Dragon Blood will only help you for so long, especially when Mikasa has another Shikuchi coming up. This could be the death of MP if he's not careful. There's another hit. Mikasa can land the Shikuchi. We'll get juked around just a little bit. Mikasa does have a Dragon Tail. Uh, I'm sorry, MP does have a Dragon Tail, so Mikasa has to be careful. And he will be careful, though, with another Shikuchi. MP has got to be careful once again. Another Shikuchi going in. Mikasa looking for the kill. MP is going to try to give him the old juke around, but it looks like it will not work. Mikasa finds a killing spree on the Dragonite in the mid lane. He will Shikuchi his way out, and we will be just fine. That is going to complete his ring of Aquila. And, well, three kills almost two minutes into the game. It's not bad for a Weaver who's probably going to be, as, who's probably going to end up carrying in, uh, in a substantial way. Yafit's on the top lane as Juggernaut, having a little bit of a rough time, although he's still getting his farm, actually a lot of farm, versus the enemy heroes. Getting the level advantage from being involved in those kills, putting him a little bit ahead of, putting the tri lane in general ahead, now 10 BZ. He yields up there, does get a two-man no, but it's not enough. Blade Fury is active and it does eat that arrow, making it do absolutely nothing. Yavitz yeah, finds an easy, easy kill on the top lane. CM, a little bit too soft to be wandering around like that, and that she was substantially punished. But already a 5 to 0 deficit, and Startail not looking too good. I mean, all these Korean teams, you, if you see them take an early advantage, generally they did a little bit better. Starting off with this much of a disadvantage, it's, it's just painful. It's painful to watch on so many levels because. You, you guys all know, Tong Fu, who, you know who they are. They have a couple of different players from the lineup that they ran at TI3, but these players have been around the block, to say the least. Startail, not so much. They don't have the experience, they haven't played for as long, and generally, uh, I would say that the Korean team's not as good as any other of the teams in the world. I would say that you take an average b rank team-ish of the Western scene, they would probably be able to, you know, fight very, very easily in these conditions. So, Tung Fu would have had to have some sort of substantial advantage in the early stage if they wanted to have any hopes of really uh, getting this game in the bag. But as of right now, they are substantially behind, and really, they don't really have, uh, aside from that tri lane on the top lane, any mean, any way to get back into this game. MP is not the type of hero as the Dragonite that will actually win you the early game through ganks. Yes, if he finds a haste rune or an invisibility, he could make something happen. But really, MP is a very passive hero. He's just barely holding his own versus Mikasa, who's diving yet again for this Dragonite kill, though this time he will back off. Oh, that's not the button I wanted to press. He will back off this time. And uh, T Tong Fu, their only real weakness is up on this top lane, I would say, where Juggernaut, probably not a viable person to kill, but if somehow Startail find a lockdown, find some sort of disable onto the likes of Earthshaker or Rubik, that could be the death of someone on the top lane. And hopefully for that, their case, it won't uh, result in a return kill. But uh, it's against a Rubik as well as an Earthshaker. That's a pretty tall order. I mean, bottom lane, YK is going to get a kill onto X-Bingo anytime soon. He is getting absolutely bullied in this lane to hell and back. And... He's not having a good time either. X-Bingo almost at this level 6 mark. But then again, Bounty Hunter, once he gets to his level 6, he'll try to make some ganks happen. MP in a little bit of trouble. Mikasa, once again, going to go for that kill. Although this time, managing to dodge Dragon Tail with a time lapse. As Teal does come into support. Looks like top lane has been all but abandoned by the Star Tail side. Leaving Ju all up here by his lonesome. With the leap, he should be relatively safe. I don't think uh, Tung Fu have enough burst damage, or enough disable, or enough com combination of the two in order to actually burst Marana down before she does get a leap off. But still, she's probably not going to be in for the easiest of times, unless Tong Fu just keep on pushing, which it looks like might actually just happen. 10 BZ as well as Gandhi. Thinking about smoking up, though they don't have a smoke available to them just yet. They're instead going to try to go for X-Bingo. YK does have a bottle, so he'll be at full HP, or relatively uh, speaking. He'll, have, he'll be pretty healthy. He'll have a lot of mana. He'll start things off with the Shuriken. That didn't really do much. Here comes the wraparound. 10 BZ as well as Gandhi. Gonna get X-Bingo captured in his cogs, and that is gonna lead to his death. Clockwork. Gonna go down to the Bounty Hunter. No level 6, although that will give Bounty Hunter his level 6. So now the track gold will flow. And Startail, if they get more and more easy, easy ganks like that, what? They were smoked up, weren't they? No, they weren't. How did that... What? He saw... What? I guess he saw them and he's pinned, so it doesn't even matter. I missed a kill on the mid lane, by the way. Dragonite got nailed down by the Weaver pretty hard. Long GD didn't even spend any mana for that. So Mikasa just asserting his dominance in the mid lane, but I think the Clockwork should have seen that one coming. Maybe he was just too late and he was already trapped. I guess that's plausible. 
But either way, Gandhi as well as Tanbizi will continue their roaming. Radiance middle tower is under attack. As soon as they get their smoke, kind of a weird position there, but Ju, smelling something coming, will leap away at Mikasa. Wow, this is pretty damn bold. Those beetles in the middle of nowhere. There's a fissure going to hit Ju. Think of turning around, possibly will arrow back onto Kabu. Looks like Long DD will not be able to finish this kill unless he suicide charges it, which probably is not the best thing to do. We'll give up the kill to this Mirana. <laughs> We were actually just barely making it out of there with that time lapse. That was pretty close. Big smoke up now. MP gonna get that smoke instantly dispelled to these spots Mikasa on this mid lane. They know there's they know that there's no time lapse though. Gandhi and Tenbizi once again heading down towards the bot lane where Bingo is here. Though with only two heroes, level three, level three, I don't know if that's enough to actually kill this clockwork who's level eight, has power treads, is extraordinarily tanky. They'll need at least one more hero to come in on this. Last time it was the Bounty Hunter. A level 3 Shuriken was enough to seal the deal as well as those Janata right clicks. But with only two heroes, I don't really think they could do this. They're pretty much just wasting their time waiting for someone to come in. Possibly the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, he's going to come in for this one, but X-Bingo very close to his tower. Will be very dangerous if they do decide to go for this. Smoke ran out and X-Bingo will see everything. So no gank is going to happen, although Long TD looking to make a gank happen anyway. Will head his way down to the bottom lane where YK is not spotted just yet, though X-Bingo does have dust, and YK, he might have been, no, I think he's still fine there, but Long GD's there to back him up now, and MP, not having the best time in this mid lane versus this Weaver, going super aggressive with such an uh, early pair of power treads, the Weaver is just attacking so damn quickly, and MP, although he does have one point in Dragon's Blood, that's really not enough. I think in this particular lane, when you know that you're going to be up against a hero who relies very, very heavily on just chipping you down. Not much burst. He will chip you down, and then at a certain point, he will dive you. I think Dragon Blood might be a little bit more important to level up than Breathe Fire. Yes, Breathe Fire means that you can go aggressive, but Startail haven't really been going aggressive on the mid lane, at least. 10 BZ and Gandhi, even if they do lock him down, Time Lapse is an easy get out of jail free card for the Weaver, even after the uh, even after Dragon Tail's use. Just going survivability might have benefited Mikasa a little more. Hook shot in, 10 BZ, gonna get caught through that smoke. Gandhi, gonna get bursted down by Mikasa, instantly picks up a double kill. My god, double damage Weaver, plus 90, doesn't seem like a lot, but it's more than enough. MP teleporting in there, he is Moonlight Shattered, looking for a stun onto anyone he could find. Might find Mikasa. Uh, did they get a glimpse of him? It looks like they did not. He's gonna find Long DD instead. There's a stun, YK, as well as Bingo, though. Coming back in, Bingo, though, a little bit out of his depth, but here comes Mikasa from the back, again with the double damage. Gonna find two more kills. So far, that's four kills from Mikasa on this bottom lane. Has 2,000 gold to the bank. Will get Dragon Tailed under the tower, but a time lapse is going to let him escape. There he goes. He wants more. He's gonna find the courier. Oh, no, it's a disaster for Startail. This Weaver is just wreaking havoc. Here comes Yafitz. He wants a part of this. One chop's gonna secure that kill away from Mikasa. It's like, no, Weaver, you've gotten too many kills. Let me take this one. Mikasa now trapped behind the trees. Does have a teleportation scroll, although he could try to... Well, where does it go? There's a fissure from MP. Are they actually going to try to go for this Dragonite? Mikasa is still very, very healthy. Doesn't have time lapse. He will get chain on due to the arrow. Yafit's going to come in, trying to get an angle for that Omni Slash, though with the creeps now. It will not happen. They finally bring down this Weaver for an extra 1,000 gold in the Mirana's pocket. Telekinesis onto MP, and here comes YK once again with that track movement speed. Level 4 on that Shuriken. The Fissure will do absolutely nothing to save him. Ju will get a double kill in the meantime, and Startail getting a couple kills, finally bringing down this Weaver. It's going to give Mirana a boatload of cash, spends that instantly on Phase Booth, and still has a little bit more to boot. So they did get the gold on the right hero, Startail. They uh, did get one or two track kills out of that as well, but ultimately, Tung Fu, this Weaver is getting frighteningly huge. He almost, or he's building very, very quickly towards his Lincolns here, like a 10 minute ultimate orb with power treads and a ring of Aquila as a mid lane weaver is damn impressive. So he is having the time of his life so, so much, so such an easy time from this weaver. And Startail, they, the only real way to lock this weaver down and kill him is by doing exactly what they did on this bottom lane. Maybe adding a frostbite as well, but Dragon Tail into an arrow is pretty much their only opportunity to kill the weaver. And once the Lincoln Sphere comes out, obviously that won't work. Dragon Tail will just pop the Lincoln Sphere. Arrow will not be guaranteed to hit. So they'll need another hero to try to set that up, and that other hero will be Crystal Maiden. But that requires three heroes to all be clustered up in a location where Weaver is easily uh, in reach. And that's tall order, because if they are in such a location, then you have to worry about fissures, then you have to worry about clockwork hooking in. You open up a whole new can of worms when you're clumped up like that. 
Startail are definitely not looking too fantastic. It's kind of apparent in the gold charts, although ex as far as the entire, uh, as far as the golden experience in general are concerned, they're not too far behind. Though 12 to 5, they are still they're, it's still a disadvantage, especially 11 minutes into the game. Looks like Smoke Gank attempt on this mid lane, and MP will survive this gank from Tung Fu. Like they might even look to turn this one around. Gandhi as well as Tembe. He's still here. MP does have dragon form, so he does have that long range stun. There are many Radiant heroes on this middle lane. Not too sure if a fight's actually going to break out. Four people on each side. Kabu just trying to find a couple levels. Has hit his level six mark, so he does have that ability to steal a spell. Although Star Tails don't really have any fantastic spells to steal right now. I guess the best spell to steal will be the familiars. But Visage Gandhi with so much roaming, so much unsuccessful roaming. He's only level 3, and CM not doing too much better, only level 4. I guess track is probably the best skill for Kabu to steal, but uh, still no huge impact spells on available to this Rubik. He'll struggle a little bit to find something substantial. Bingo, gonna go for a blind hook, does get the cogs, and YK is revealed! He dispelled his invisibility, thinking that there's dust, I think. That was uh, very well played by Bingo, and I think Bounty Hunter... If he just stayed invisible, he would have been fine. Maybe the invisibility timed out. But uh, he broke his invisibility and one way or another, and that ended up getting him killed. If he was invisible, he would have been fine. Uh, well, maybe. There was smoke coming in from the... Dust coming in from the clockwork, so... Uh, I don't know, but... Either way, Bounty Hunter does go down. Taking that haste rune a little bit greedy. Knowing that they're heroes. What you doing? Don't think I didn't see that. I saw that. Because I'm a good observer guy. Long DD. Putting his ultimate on cooldown just for lulls. Yeah, you probably don't want to be doing that. Because now he's out of mana. And yeah, it's on cooldown, but right now he can't do anything. So he has to go back to the base or just wait if he wants to cast anything else. He is essentially useless for a good amount of time now. Luckily for them, Startail are not going to push... Uh, any lane be aggressive at all. They're still trying to tend to their lanes. Top lane, Marana, trying to outfarm this Weaver. Will uh, Marana, by the way, will go for her drums, but Weaver already well on his way to his Lincoln Sphere. If not, uh, there's the recipe. All right, so we just have a little bit more to go. X Bingo, trying to look tasty for a gank, and it's working. Gandhi as well as Tanbizi, who are currently without items, without any substantial items. Thinking about going for X Bingo, but little do they know that it is a trap. And Bingo, YK will get lifted up into there. There is a Sentry Ward here. Invisibility will not help you. In fact, it will hurt you. With Dust available, and Bounty Hunter gets picked off very, very easily. Startail, they want to get in on this, though. This is going to be incredibly dangerous. It is a 3v3. A couple spells used from Tong Fu. If they good, good, get a good initiation, there it is. Dragon Tail onto Long DD. They got to make sure to spread out. Fissure, going to hit only onto the CM, Long DD, going to get nuked down by that burst damage of the Visage now, but X-Bingo coming in from the back with a hook shot. He's going to take a substantial amount of damage from Ju, as well as MP. Dragon Tail, again to follow up, Yafitz does have an Omni Slash, and he wants MP. Mikasa, in the meantime, chasing down Ju. There's the Omni Slash on MP. Only a couple Slashes, though. MP, very, very tanky with the Power Treads, as well as the Overclub. Will eat the entirety of all of those spells sitting in the middle of four heroes, but it will not matter. Here comes YK, instantly will go down, try to get the track off, will not even happen. More teleportations coming in. Gandhi, you probably don't want to be doing that either. It's an absolute free feeding frenzy. Freeding frenzy? Yeah, it's a freeding frenzy, guys. On this bottom lane, another arrow flying through. That creep never saw it coming. Tong Fu absolutely cleaning up Star Tail, who. Radiance Possibly made a little bit of a mistake in reinitiating that fight. Dyer's They're already down a hero, and attack. they were very, they were fairly close to the Tongfu Tower. Maybe if the Tier One Tower wasn't there, I would have said, "Yeah, Star Tail, might as well just go for it. You have the jump on them. You get the element of surprise. That counts for something. You get to catch the enemies out of position." But uh, taking a three versus three when Radiance reinforcements was just TP away, attack. that takes balls. And uh, Star Tail, props to them for showing some balls, but at the same time. Balls doesn't matter if it just gets you killed. And now Mikasa, 15 minutes with the Lincoln Sphere. He is going to be absolutely horrible for Star Tail to deal with. They're already struggling. I mean, he has 10 freaking kills. But now that he has a Lincoln Sphere, not only will that protect him, but that'll also potentially protect the likes of X Bingo, who he could just you know, slap that Lincoln Sphere buff on. And then hookshot in, YOLO, and you're completely just fine. 
no dragon tails. Maybe we'll get burned out by a track, but hell, if that does happen, then there's no track on them. So, Star Tail, whatever they have to cast to, to uh, get rid of that Lincoln Sphere, it is important. So, Lincoln Sphere is going to be very, very annoying for them to deal with, especially considering the fact that they really don't have any big items of their own. BKB, although it looks like Dragonite's going to go for a Bracer. BKB from Dragonite is a million years away. Mirana does have a drum as well as Faith's boots, so she's doing okay, but definitely not enough. You can just see just from the gold per minute, we can take a look at the net worth as well. Weaver, Juggernaut, as well as Clockwork are firmly on top. Now they're going to go in for a little bit more blood. Yafit leading the way, does not have an Omni Slash, though now he does. One point in that healing ward just to lead into this fight. They'll walk right over Sentry Ward. I think it still might have had a little bit more vision on it. They do start off with a little bit of vision, then slowly time out. YR, looking for it. We'll get hit, and we'll get wow, hook shot it. How do they see this guy? What the hell? How did they see him? I have no idea how they saw him. I don't I, I don't know. Or Shaker's gonna find that kill. Now MP on his way out. BKB was popped by X Bingo. That was a 10 second charge. But holy crap, what the hell happened? Was there dust there and I just missed it? Long GD, he can get stunned up as well as get, getting that Grave Chill. He will get nuked down, although Majesty Charges turn around for a Fissure. Will catch two with an Omni Slash, finishing them off. MP, gonna take a little bit of chip damage, but 10 BZ, gonna call GG already. 17 minutes in and Tong Fu putting up a clinic. Startail can't even kill Long GD, who goes in once again for a Fissure. Will trade his life for it. That's gonna be the end of the game, guys. That was a very, very short, very, very clean by Tong Fu. I'm going to go back and actually figure out how they saw that bounty hunter. They definitely, they might have seen his smoke, and they would have known that he's there. But, let's just back up a little bit. Let's just back up. Okay, here we go. We have sentries. Take a quick vision check. There's no vision on these heroes. Uh, where's the last one? Who's the last one? There is, what? Why does he have BKB? Okay, that's a bug. X-Bingo. Did he pop dust and I just missed it? Ah, he did catch him with the dust. Okay, I just missed it. I was looking over here. I didn't see the particle effect. So YK is, uh, that was perfectly reasonable. I was just a little bit blind. Alright, guys. So that's going to be it for game number one. Virtus Pro was also supposed to be playing in this, but I don't know what happened. Their games are just not here, so... This is going to be just a best of two between Startail and Tongfu, so we're going to have another one of these games coming up right after this. Uh, thank you guys for all the new subscriptions. I got a whole bunch of Twitch followers, a whole bunch of YouTube subscribers uh, due to my live streaming of the DK versus Alliance game. So I'd like to thank every single one of you for that. Hopefully this game uh, was a little bit better, though. wasn't really warmed up as much as last time. I'm just going to put that out there to alleviate some of my responsibility, uh, though it doesn't really make much sense. Uh, I want to say one more thing, right, OGN actually, like, said that they had content in these games, which I don't know if they actually do, I don't really know the copyright status of replay games or what have you, but uh, it just doesn't mean anything, the videos are still going to be up, it, the YouTube said that they're just going to potentially have ads for OGN or something like that, so this may just be, like, monetized for them, I don't know what's going on with that, so if there's ads there, that's why, so, just wanted to let you guys all know that, thanks for watching, GG.